Hello, guys. It's Corey Jagon Marco, and it is... God, what episode of... The, I'm not gonna lie. I'm very, very not feeling good. I wish I hadn't posted that I felt better, because I jinxed myself, for sure. Um, I'm trying to just grind this out, but... God, I don't feel good at all. Um, ow. And I just blasted my fucking knee in the desk. So, this is week, I want to say it's episode 21. I think episode 20 was the one done by Clinic. Thank you guys so much for taking over for me while I was gone. Um, I really, really appreciate it. God, I, I sound terrible. It's like, <laughs> it's like I don't have the breath to push out my words right now. Um... And thank you, everybody, who was sending me messages last week, too. I, uh, you know, I tried to get through all of them and respond, and then I've felt like shit, so I've also been kind of, like, back and forth. Uh, if I didn't respond to any anybody that sent me messages, uh, I promise it was more or less just because I looked at the message, and then I forgot to answer it. Um, God, why do I feel so shitty? Uh, okay, anyways, um, we're, we're doing Railroad 2 right now, the recap of Railroad 2, and, uh, the playoffs, round one, predictions, okay, I just, I gotta get right into this, not gonna lie, I missed a lot of matches this week, um, so I'm gonna be having to kind of speculate on how certain things went, it looks like, okay, no, Flossed only played the one match for a second. I thought they played two. Okay. Oh. It's just like an absurd amount of sickness right now. Not really sure what's wrong with me. I went to the doctors yesterday. Man, my fever is feeling not great. Okay. <clears throat> so. Romario versus Flossed. I have to just just skip straight through here. If I'm going to have any chance of getting this done, it looks like Romario won by about 81 points, which is a good win for them. Um, still a good effort by Flossed to have kept it this close. Romario is no joke of a team. I'm not sure who Manga is here. Um, but he had a pretty good half there on Allied side. Need to be able to pull this thing up a little bit more. Oh, okay, now you guys won't be able to see that. Fuck. So in the first half, or I mean, I don't know, it might not have been the first half. Manga was 30 and 18. Vanaki had 25. Lobaton and Mand and Matt all right behind him. Zaps, I'm guessing, in train there. Just a little one frag, or uh, three frags back of Matt there. So really even effort across the board by Romario. And then on the floss side of things, you got King Yo with 33. King Yo getting the car now. I'm sure he's just loving it. Uh, it's continued to show that he is an excellent rifle and can take full advantage of uh, not having to play with the Stas. Having that one-shot kill weapon. It looks like Bullet and Bromley rang. Um, Bromley had a pretty good half there on uh, Axis side sniping, 25 and 15 at a boy. Uh, I think Fincher had a way better half on allies here. God, I can't see <laughs> the fucking scores because of the white of Railroad 2. It's like blending in. Maybe if I... Yeah, there we go. So there it is. Allied side for flaws. There it is. Fincher, 39 and 23. Uh, Nightmares, 25 and 23. King Yo at third, and then on Romario, you got 31 for Vanna Key, uh, 26 for Man, 25 for Matt, Zaps 21, Lobaton 20, and then uh, Stas on Manga 14. Uh, but looks like Flost actually won that allied side. I mean, obviously, Railroad 2, that can be the way it goes sometimes. Um, all in all, I mean, Flost shouldn't hang their heads about that loss. Romario is. For sure, one of, like, the top... I mean, I would say top... Really the top two, because I would say that Washed Up and Romario are both very capable of being able to hang with DBA. Um, but DBA is clearly the best team there. Uh, but Romario, I mean, you look at the explosive uh, abilities on that team with Vanna Key, with Matt. Um, Mand is an excellent sniper. Um, you know, they've been playing together forever. Zaps is a great utility guy. Lobaton, able to play every class. 
And uh, yeah, just just really, really great team there, Romario. Everybody knows I love them. And, uh, ah, man. Ah. Tell you what, it's, it's a little worrisome that I've been sick for this long. Um, and I start to feel better, and then it just like... Uh, all right. Anyways. I love Romario. Flossed has continued to look better and better all season. They've got a couple guys that have looked excellent. And, uh, you know, they could be the kind of team that could pull off an upset in the playoffs 100% um, in the vein of a CIS last season. But Romario gets the win here, 162-81, to 81, exactly doubling Flossed. And, uh, man, I just feel so weak right now. Okay. Moving on in bronze. I'm trying so hard to push all the way through this. I'm going to upload this no matter what. Because I feel bad um, that I missed last week's episode. Really, really appreciate the clinic guys for, for taking over for that, uh, that week. But I can't miss another one. I should have just done this earlier in the day when I started to feel... like I felt better for just like a couple hours and I was like... I'm going to post, like on my phone, I used it to do YouTube and was like, I'm going to let everybody know I'm doing the Dodcast tonight. No idea if people actually saw it, because it was like a community post or some shit, but whatever. I'm like shaking now. So, this match, I wish I had casted. Um, the match I did cast, Clinic versus Insomnia, yeah. Ended up being a little bit of a blowout. Insomnia had to play with five for a bit there on their, uh, I think on their allied side, yeah. Um... And I had the option to cast this, but, you know, I wanted, I thought that that Clinic Insomnia match was also going to be great. I got it wrong, because this match was fucking a bonkers. DBA 152 washed up 149. And I believe it was something like a last 15 second cap out. And, like, um, the Spicy Butthole crew pulled off, like, multiple caps to bring it back in the last few minutes. When they were down, heading into the home stretch. Uh, Big, big win to finish out their undefeated season, which is something that Thunder could not do on this exact map. Uh, it ended up being a pretty similarly close match for us, so uh, this could have easily gone the other way, obviously. Um, really great effort by Washed Up all season. We've been saying how these guys absolutely could potentially beat DBA. Um, of course, Bullet well, mentioned on my stream when I was casting, the fact that, that Dillard, of course, came back to play against these guys. Luke has a knack for popping up right when these matches are coming and uh, and doing work, no matter how long it's been since he's been gone. But looking at the frags here on this half, you've got Die Life 29, Stealth 28, Dillard 23, Twist 21, Stamp 18, Laura 14, uh, Bromley 29, Defrag 27, Pro Star 22, Bullet 21, and War Within and Casino, excuse me, 18. Not sure on the uh, the classes. I like this. <laughs> the comment Deidre put Silver Match of the Week. That's funny. Um, did I already go through this half? No, I didn't. Okay, and then uh, this side, Defrag again with another great half. I mean, he is so important for Washed Up. When he wasn't going to be around... Uh, that really was potentially taking the wind out of washed up sales, but being able to get him back in is proven to pay off so hard. Um, he had 31 there with the grand, always good for a good grand half. Cody, Pro Star 28, Bullet, and Casino. Casino has been playing excellent lately, as again, we all expected if he was able to start playing just a little bit, uh, he would get back in, into shape. Um, where was I? Bromley with 25, and War Within with 12 there. Um, I'm not sure what classes everybody was playing there. I just assumed that Defrag had a grand that half, but he could have had a bar for all I know. <sighs> okay, and uh, on the other side, I believe this was second half, because I saw a clip of Laura getting a, uh, a really nice clip with a double pistol, and then they capped out shortly thereafter, which I believe was how they won. Um... Luke with the top frag. Of course he did. Uh, Bullet was not kidding when he said that Luke came back and just uh, laid a little poo-poo on them. Uh, Matt with 26. And then really equal across the board there. Stealth 23, Laura 20, Stamp 20, Twist 12. 
Um, you know, like I said, this was one of those epic matches that you see, like the T3 Thunder Railroad 2 matches. Um, wish I had casted it. it. Sounds like DBA faced adversity and were able to just face it down and say, like, we going undefeated. Suck it. And uh, pull it off. But such props to Wash Up for pushing DBA to the limit. And in the final week of the regular season, making a statement of y'all better be on notice because this ring ain't just yours yet. And it ain't. Um, and obviously, Romario will have something to say about that, too. You know, really, again, like in all these divisions, anybody is capable of beating anybody. Uh, you know, I think if you had told a lot of teams, after you look at the standings for season two, if you had said, like, hey, this team here, Thunder, see that one loss? It was to these guys here, the clinic. You know, like, <laughs> although that week I saw it coming. I don't think a lot of other people saw it coming. So anybody who thinks that they've got a freebie under any circumstances, you're making a grave error. Um, take note from what we saw in that episode of the Dodcast last season. Because we know Tony was basically just like, eh, like, yeah, you know, good luck, have fun. But it's Anzio and Thunder. Who cares if Toxinator's missing? What's the worst that can happen? And I was like, ah. Anyways, I don't need to go on a fucking tangent about nothing. Um, oh. So that, 152-149, to 149, DBA overwashed up. Big final match of the season there. Bronze, DBA locks up the undefeated regular season. Congrats to them, but also congrats to Washed Up for proving that uh, in this sort of David versus Goliath uh, matchup, they could win. Uh, same, same for Romario too. Like Romario has got to be looking at that and like, all right, you know, this is very, very doable. If they weren't already, I don't think that anybody is like, we can't beat these guys with, with any team in any division, but you know, just, uh, God playing up the, uh, whew. yeah. Anyways, where am I? Here we go. Silver. We're moving on to now. So first up in this super ironic matchup, we have goose patrol, Versus Jetty, Goose Patrol wins 217 to 96. This was the return of Debo after his two week suspension for what happened in a match versus Jetty. Uh, it was like just the way everything worked out. I'm sure Goose Patrol was quite happy about that to have him come back in his first match, getting to play against Jetty. Um, you know, and it looks like they they laid the smack down here. Um, you know, about a 121 point win. Uh, God, I can't really see the scores all that well. Looks like Gall, of course, 35, Debo, 33, DB, 30, Hopper, 24, Reptar, 19, Big Bird, 11. Uh, on the other side, Modgers going hard, 29, John, 28. Oh, wait, that's, wait, what? Modgers, I, wait, maybe that's Matthew, as in Icy Hot Matthew? I saw Matthew and assumed it was Modgers, but I'm guessing that Jetty had to use a ringer. And so that was Matthew from um, Icy Hot slash No-Go. Because Modgers 24 there, Ian 21. Um, they lost this half by about 20-something. 20 24, maybe, it looks like, on Axis. So a good Axis side there for Jetty. But the Allied side, it looks like they just were not able to get it going at all. Um, a swarming offense here by Goose Patrol, although the frags are only a four point. This is interesting. Um, so you have a 97 point victory here, so about two and a half caps. A more dominant win, certainly, than the first half. Um, unless I'm misreading that. No, I'm reading it correctly. Uh, but the frags are very close, you know, four points apart. Um, Matthew with a 37. What a god. I just said, like, last week how I was really hoping I'd, we'd get to see Matthew play more and more uh, because he's such a good player, always exciting to watch. And sure enough, after I said that, he's gotten into a couple games and shown the people what they remember about the guy, which is that he is buff and he's got the stuff. Um, Modgers and John with 25 apiece. Ian Galasso. Uh, the Ian Galasso Award for Biggest D on the stream right there. That's the man. And he was 23 and 17, having a good half. Allied sniping. I think I had the exact same score in my half. But on the Goose Patrol side, 32 for Gall, 27 for Debo, 28 for DB, uh, 
21 for Hopper, 20 for Reptar, and Big Bird with 18, I believe, going train. I, you know, like, I'd love to know how the score ended up being a little more lopsided this half, where the frags didn't reflect it as much. Um, because, like, you expect the ninja caps on allies, usually. You don't see a lot of ninja capping on axes. It can happen. But, uh, usually the ninjas are happening on allies' side of this map. Uh, I don't know if it was just, like, um, you know, communication lapses on the side of Jetty here on their defense, covering up flags, etc. But, um, you know, uh, I'm just going off on a tangent. My head's killing me, too. Oh, yeah. It's getting hot, boys. And gals. Um... So yeah, big win there for Goose Patrol. I'm sure they thoroughly enjoyed getting to beat Jetty after that whole situation. Thigamajig and uh, 217 to 96. 120 point win. Goose Patrol with a good finish off to the season. Where's the next Silva match? Clinic and Insomnia. Oh man, these screenshots are uh... oh, son of a bitch. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. Okay, so I had to download the screenshots here, so you guys can't see them. I'm just going to read them. Uh, this was a big, big win for Insom or for Clinic, as I already said. Insomnia started off so well um, on their first half axis side. Uh, I honestly thought that they were going to cap out, like, probably a minute into the half, which then was like, man, if they, they can put Clinic on their heels. Clinic is not used to playing on their heels. Uh, when it happens to Thunder, it's something that, like, if we start to get dominated for any amount of time, you know, like, when you're not used to having to play on that back foot all the time, it can throw you off and lead down a slippery slope of getting capped on multiple times. So, I'm sure Insomnia was was thinking along those lines, like, hey, we get this cap out, um, we could kind of seize control of this entire match. But, Clinic, of course, the the fucking gods of the Silver Division of KTP... They did not give up a cap there at all after, I think, Sean had, like, four kills off the initial or something for Insomnia. Some crazy shit. Uh, and, yeah, uh, Clinic, they brought it back around. They were able to to keep things close and not give up instant cap outs. And, uh, clearly, they ended up winning by a lot. That score is deceptive for sure. Um Really, so the first half was 93.59. That's more what the score was overall, I'd say, like a cap difference. However, Insomnia lost their sixth during the second half, like, I don't know, maybe eight minutes left, and there's a lot of caps after that. So looking at uh, Clinic here, you got Insom with the top frag on allies, 37 at a boy. Stark with 33 on the bar. Carp, of course, 31 and 23. He had a bunch of crazy movie clips. Um, as always, Carp is just uh, the sniper sniper across the board, much like Stealth. And then uh, Vic and Suave and Candy all right within like two frags of each other there at 24. And for Insomnia, Sean, as I said, carring four-way looked outstanding. Um, just a nuisance on clinic and ticket and pushing up four way and pressuring carp, not letting him get very comfortable. Um, Purdy, second top frag, continuing to get better and better every time he plays because the guy is a DOD legend. And uh, that's what you can expect from guys like this who were good, skilled players back before the skill curve of the game went so far up. Um, now it's like a guy like this comes back and understands the evolution of the game like he clearly does. Uh, and, and is able to just slide right in and be a fucking thug, man. Just just dropping bombs. You know, like, don't let his scores fool you. Watching him play, you're like, ooh, man, yeah, you can see that this guy was a stud in the heyday of DoD, and why? And you can tell he's only going to keep getting better and better until Insomnia have themselves another freaky-deaky rifle, uh, dropping some bombs, able to take the place of Illusion, who obviously went to Icy Hot, um... Hypnotic, 26 there on the sniper. Uh, Gandhi, Mike, 25, 9, 16. Had like a whole 19 in train. Uh, really good battle in train there between Candyman and had like a whole very back and forth. You don't see Candyman go negative too often in train, but they were able to hold Sam down. Usually he is just, especially on allied side, like 
inside inside your butthole. And uh, 22 and 25, if I'm the train guy uh, going against Sam, I'm going to be very pleased to have kept him there, regardless of what my score is. So then you go to the second half, and it was 242 to 32 uh, in favor of Clinic because Insomnia only has five here. Uh, four, Insomnia, Sean at 30, Hip 27. Um, Nick had like a whole 26 this half, uh, 26 and 26. Uh, 9 and Purdy, 22 and 20, respectively. And then Suave on Clinic, 36 and 19 with a car. He was just running all over the place. Just like flicking around with the fucking car. It was insane. Um, next highest was Candy. Now, as I said, usually he is going off in train. And usually he's doing it with the rifles. This time, he busted on a little something unexpected with the oont piece. Went 34 and 23. 18 flag caps, uh, multiple movie clips. I'm pretty sure he had two fast 4Ks on the rail yard side. Um, just looking like a boss. Carpenter, Mr. Consistent with 30. Uh, this half, 30 and 20. Insom, 27. Vic, 26. Stark, 25. Just, as always, with Clinic, great team performance across the board. You know, there wasn't even anybody who was out, like, 10 frags away from anybody else on the team. Just, they are the epitome of a team effort in DoD. Um, you know, there, there, there's a reason they're the undisputed kings of KTP silver until someone can dethrone them. Uh, and I don't just mean beat them because I mean, obviously now if they were to be beat, of course, then yes, they've been dethroned. If it had been in the regular season, they're still the kings, but they are undefeated in their two full regular seasons and one whole playoff. Now they're trying to uh, extend that into another championship here and they are most definitely favored uh, Insomnia, now going to have to try to get Kaboom in to replace Gandhi. Um, you know, I think during the cast, somebody came, I think it was Sean that came in and said, Gandhi busted his keyboard in half, which I think we can all relate to playing this game. Uh, so I don't know. We'll see if Mike is back. Uh, no idea. I haven't heard anything about it. I haven't been around because I'm dying. Or at least it feels that way. So good game to both. Um, Moving on, uh, I have to pee so bad too. Where are we? 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 I've lost track. I think it's the no go match, right? Lads on tour, no go. There it is. Lads on tour, no go. Uh, lads on tour won 209 to 60. Um, I, I was told that there was another rage quit in this match. Uh, it doesn't look like it, though. Yeah, no, it doesn't look like there's any rage quits here, so. Just double-checking once again. Nope. Okay, so no rage quit here. But a big win for Lads. Um, for sure the second, second best team in Silver. They are the biggest threat to the dynasty of Clinic. Uh, even just in their head-to-head -head game, you saw that. Uh, Milo dominated as would be expected uh, i did not get to do a dodcast this week obviously but that would have easily been the prediction um milo is a fucking pain in the dick to play against on this map he will not hesitate to prone he will not hesitate to let you run by and shoot you in the back so uh on top of just straight up dominating you so like you can't just be like well he's gonna run at me i can wait him out or i can out aim him or out react him um you have to be aware of his versatility, and it's pretty much impossible to keep track of. He had uh, 44, 38, 82 fucking kills. 82 and 47. Um, Timo, 28, 34, 62 there. Those two just always doing it big. Uh, Yanni, 42. Cage continues to have an outstanding season rifling uh, about 60 frags i think it was like 58 he's looked excellent on the rifle after having to heavy for a couple seasons uh with typical there and uh louis 34 on the car always good for the car halves guaranteed um you know a little bit less on the grand side there but i would bet that out of those 19 kills he probably had at least one like fast 4k movie clip kind of thing because he's he's very explosive um, and, in the way that his halves go, like, 
his score isn't always the best way to tell what his impact was on any given half because he can just kill your whole team. He could go five and thirty, and I and I would bet that those five kills happened like in a close uh, time frame, and that's really uh, really valuable for uh, lads to have because you have a lot of steady players around him there. Um, but having that explosive guy on the rifle to go with Milo doing it on the heavy, uh, that is that is huge. And then uh, Toki fourteen and. 18 for 32. Looks like he was going train there. On the no-go side of things, uh, I, I didn't get to watch this match, so I don't really know what happened. It's obviously a big W here for lads. Looks like Paul Kuhn got to ring, as well as Candyman and Hopper. Okay, so no-go is missing a lot of people there. Paul had a really good game, as you would expect. He's a great gold sniper. Um... I don't know if he sniped, actually, so I shouldn't make that assumption. He could have been playing something else, because obviously Recoil is playing, too. Recoil had a really good game as well. Um, Recoil's been rifling lately, so I would assume that that was what they did. But he also loves the railroads, as do most snipers. Um, Hopper looks like he had a pretty good game there, yeah. Candy, of course. I wonder if Candy got to go train, get a little practice before the match. Uh, he had about 51. Paul at like 61, Recoil at 56, Hopper at 42, Apple at 32, Allen with 40, 36. God, my fucking, oh, my head. And that's all. Uh, you know, lads on tour are able to finish the season with the win. That's going to be big for their confidence heading into the se uh, postseason because they're going to have the mountain of clinic to climb, and uh, we'll see if they can they can do it. I think that that will, will be one of the closest finals matches ever if they get to play against each other. Uh, I expect that all three maps would be anybody's game, um, and there's no predicting who will win. I would have to take clinic, but I fully recognize that uh, they could be dethroned by this team because you have, I mean, most of this team are players that played in gold, like, for all of the first two seasons. Really, I think all of them are. Toki played in gold. Uh, no, Yanni didn't play in gold. So Yanni is, is 100%, you know, only played silver. Timo played gold bowl seasons. Cage played gold bowl seasons. Milo played gold bowl seasons. Louis played gold bowl seasons, but I, it's kind of weird because he was, like, on one team, on another team, on one team, on another team back and forth between T3 and no-go. So, like, you know, it's kind of... He, for sure, you know, like, if you're going to classify so he's a gold player. He top-fragged against Thunder in a gold match, so, like, that's kind of all you need to say. So these guys have more than enough of what it takes to be able to take out Clinic, and, uh, you know, hopefully we get to see that matchup play out on the biggest stage, uh, and hopefully I am alive to see it happen and cast it. Uh, Nothing for Noga to hold their heads about here, heading into the playoffs. Like, just get that roster locked down, get everybody on as much as you can, and uh, try to scrim. I know Nogo in the past has been a very active team. I'm not sure if that's still the case, because usually Tony Compton is telling all of us how much they're scrimming, but it doesn't seem like he's really, you know, I mean, they were missing Spoon here, just off the top of my head, just looking at the, the screenshots, who is a big, big uh, ingredient in Nogo success always. Him and Allen are an excellent heavy team. Corey Price is missing. Um, I think Deidre was missing. I'm not sure. He might have been... I don't know. I have no idea. Anyways, moving on. I'm sorry. It was uh, 209 to 60 Nogo. I'm like getting fucking delirious now. Why so serious versus I fart? This was a hell... Actually, you know what? First, I'm gonna go just do the Thunder match. Because we're on to gold now. Um, as always, T3 versus Thunder comes down to within 10 points. Uh, T3, 109 to Thunder, 100. They came out with an excellent game plan and uh, executed it to perfection. We were not able to get the cap out needed to, to finish off the comeback there in the end. Uh, you know, having taken a look at the HLTVs and seeing like how that they were maneuvering around the map and everything, they... they Really had a good idea of what they wanted to do coming into this match, and they did it uh, big time. Leo with, I, I mean, this is probably his best game that he's ever had in KTP. Um, 
Like, I don't think that that's a stretch to say. Clearly. Uh, and... Taylor with the good axis half, playing playing the sort of like the defensive role for them. Uh, he was very much the one getting the kills in a lot of the holding flag situations where we were attempting to cap out. And that's, you know, it's like Bud. You know, I mean, like we've talked about all the time, Bud uh, as part of a heavy duo and what his value is. And Taylor was able to do that to perfection there for T3. Uh, no Name playing long did an excellent job of holding down J-Rod. Of course, uh, Nick with a stupid ammo box in the loft and sticking his little elbow out behind a sandbag. I think I killed him like twice on my axis side. Uh, we always just tend to cancel each other out most of the time, uh, historically. I think almost every time we play, like our scores are pretty similar each half. And then we just end up like, you know, within three or four kills and three or four deaths or whatever. Uh, and on the Thunder side, I mean, we had a very rough axis have, as you can see, uh, Brian and Jules were by far the top fraggers. Everybody else sort of beneath that line. Uh, Till had a lot of really important plays coming out of train over here. Um, and also, you know, they kind of did a little bit of a double switch where, like, because Till had died, uh, it, it wasn't even like... So people were talking about a ninja cap. It wasn't really a ninja cap. Leo literally just came from G-Box and walked into the ninja house and then walked out of the ninja house. Like, <laughs> it was literally, like, one second of waiting, as opposed to a ninja cap where, like, you are having to uh, really let everybody know you're there and try to set up the whole circumstance to, to have the timing. I don't know. Fuck me. Regardless, uh, really, really good half there. They were swarming us, obviously. And then our allied side... You know, I mean, we brought it back. Uh, Ryan and Jules in apartments were playing absolutely out of their minds, as you can see there. Um, Brian as well. Uh, J-Rod having a little bit of a tough time on long, but that's because they were defending the two for, like, probably ten minutes of this half. Uh, and as a long player, you're pretty much just walking into the grinder there, wherever you're coming from. Uh, and they were able to pretty much perfectly never... Like, every time we got the one they were always in good position at the two. Um, there was one time I know where, like, I... Because I was pushing train a lot. You know, they were just not really, like... They weren't able to get to mid. They were having to play defense. So as a sniper, it was like, Jared, Brian, you guys just, like, go do whatever you want. I'll cover train. I'll try to push train. We can, you know, see what happens. And there was one time where I got the one, and, like, me and Till were just shooting at each other through a fucking railing for like full clips i think i hit him three times with a grand uh and he ended up with like seven health and killed me and then he fell to his death right after and we got the he got the one back and then cratered and then we got the two i think like 10 seconds later it was just like everything that could go wrong uh for us when it came to capping those two flags did um but obviously it was a, a ridiculous match as always you look at uh, the history between these two teams. Just on Railroad 2 now, they beat us by three points in the semis. We beat them by... Let me check here. I was going to kind of, like, add up all the scores and see, you know, exactly. But, like, I just felt god-awful when I woke up, so I didn't do it. But where is KTP Season 2 demos? There it is. Okay, finals. Uh, so on Railroad 2, they won by three... Uh, and then in finals, it was 44 there, and ninety four. So that's one hundred thirty eight. Uh, so that's two to one in their favor, but the point differential works out in our favor. Uh, and then Lennon, we won sixty five and one fifty seven. So you're looking at like two hundred. So now it's 2-2 two to two in the maps. Armory, we won by, like, 38. So that's 3 to us. Rail Yard, they won by 1. So that's 3-3. Three, three. And then Solitude, we won by, I think... I don't even remember. I'll look it up right now. Uh, Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I don't know. I, I should have just done the math for all this, because that was what I wanted to do, but... Just because it's crazy when you look at like this, the series between these two teams. We won by nine. 
Um, so yeah, four three us in the KTP series between uh Thunder and T three, with surely more matches to come. Um, but good game to them. Uh, we'll probably see them in the playoffs at some point. I don't know. I haven't looked at anything. I have to pee so bad, and I'm starting to worry that it's like my kidneys shutting down or something, and that's why I'm so sick. But nobody can seem to figure out why. I'm gonna be right back just to go pee real quick, and I'm not gonna edit this out. Sorry, just one second. Okay. Oh, God. Okay, I am sorry, guys, but when I was a kid, my kidneys uh, stopped working. Like, it was like 30% and 15% or something of what they were supposed to be doing. And I had to get pretty major surgery on my kidneys and my bladder. And eventually it got fixed. Um, but I was like really, I used to run like 100, literally 105 fevers all the time. Um, and, and have seizures when my fevers got that high and have to go to the ER when I was like a really little baby and stuff. Uh, and I've been holding my pee to be on the computer lately, which is exactly what causes things like that. So no longer am I going to keep doing that because now I feel really shitty and I, I'm, I don't think it's that I knock on wood, but God, that would be a shame if after all that work and all those years, I just fucked myself over in such a horrific way. Okay, up next in the Gold Division, GGT3. Big W for them, obviously. Um, none of the matches in gold here were able to result in any movement in the standings, but we knew that ahead of time. It was only Why So Serious versus Ifart that could. Ifart had to win by more than, I think, like 29. Um, and we'll get to that, but everything else was locked in playoff-wise. Uh, you know, I know most teams were just, like, not scrimming this week because of it, and we're kind of like, whatever. Um, okay, so Icy Hot, Rat Pack. This match was fucking crazy. So, this was a crazy match. Uh, I casted this. Performance-wise, um, let me just fucking just take a look here. On the Allied side, Jesse and Bees, the two big top fraggers for Icy Hot. Followed by Hildy and Sick, Vertex, Matthew. There's my boy Matthew again. And then on Rat Pack side, Grant, the top fragger with 31 on the STG. PB with 30. This is the second half, by the way. Devin, 23. CK, 22. Arachnid, 18. And Illusion, 14. Um, and then on the Allied side here for, for Rat Pack, Illusion, top frag going train. He went train both halves there, which I don't know how familiar a route it is, but... Played excellent on Allied side. All of Rat Pack looked excellent. They looked really good for, I think, like 12 minutes of Axis side as well, to be honest. Um, 33 for Illusion, 32 for Devin, 26 for PB, um, CK, 23, Grant, 22, Arachnid, 14, and on Icy Hot for their Axis side, 37 for Casey, 27 for Jesse. Great game for Jesse there all around. Great half for, for Casey with the car. Um, B's at 22, Matthew 21, and Hildy 20, William 14. This half, though, obviously, like, kind of, I mean, it didn't go their way. They lost by 74. Uh, 
Naturally, though, they're heading into their allied side, so while it was like, hey, this is great for Rat Pack, they could win this. Like, they just have to lock shit down, but Iciat's going into their allied side. So you would think, after seeing that result there, that it must have been just like, oh, well, Icy Hot came out on the Allied side and, like, laid some fucking dick. Just just railed them out, blew their back out. No. Incorrect. Uh, what actually happened is Rat Pack was winning. Pretty handily, we're controlling their Axis side. Four. Ugh. God. Ugh. For, I believe it was, like, I want to say eight to ten minutes. Um... Unfortunately, they then gave up one ninja cap, right? So that cut the lead down to 50, I believe, from where it was at. They won by 74, and then they were up by like another 30 or something. Like, they looked really good. They capped out. It looked like Rat Pack had this thing uh, in the books, in the bag, in the book bag. I don't fucking know. And then... On the cast, I was like, well, all right, they gave up one ninja cap. Once you give up one, like, you're going to be on top of your shit. So now Rat Pack definitely have this win locked down. Um, because usually you don't want to have to rely on ninja caps that late to bring it back. Because the other team's going to be all over it. Uh, however, there was clearly some mis miscommunication going on with Rat Pack. They were, in a lot of instances, kind of like sending guys to the wrong places. Uh, I know there was often time that Illusion was kind of like stuck at the one by himself. Uh, you know, not really getting that support. I mean, you see that sometimes it doesn't matter. Like, in the Thunder match, we had four guys sent to that, that last flag preemptively. But Leo just had fucking flawless timing to have got into that ninja house just ahead of the four of us. Uh, and able to just slink on through. But, you still gotta send the guys to that last flag. And, uh... I mean, this, again, what happens is about two minutes later, I think, I see out Ninja Caps again. So, now, Rat Pack is up by, I think, ten, with, like, fucking three minutes left or something. But it's like, okay, no way they're going to give up another Ninja Cap. There's just no way. Like, they're going to be fucking making sure that whatever flag they are needing to hold or deciding to hold, that they are all there. They are checking houses. They are not giving up any openings. And I, it's like I fucking just jinx them every time I said this, because sure enough, like, a minute later, there's another fucking ninja. This wasn't as much of a ninja cap. This was more like the Leo cap, where, um, against us, where it was kind of like the timing just sort of worked out. I don't think, I don't think Vertex was hiding for a long time for that one. Or whoever it was. Maybe it was Hildy. I think Hildy did one of them. Um, he proned, yeah, in A-Hall, I think, for one of them. For sure. So I don't remember who it was. Fuck me, man. Like, fuck me. But yeah, so like three minutes left or something. Icy Hot needed to cap out again. It was just not going to happen. They tried everything they could. Icy Hot almost gave it up at one point. It looked like maybe... Rat Pack was going to get mid and have a real push on it, but Icy Hot uh, held on. They didn't wilt, and they pulled off the win by 30 in the end. Great season to both teams. I know Rat Pack has their head a little bit down after the last few games, but this match right here is proof that if they can just kind of, like, play within a system together, um, you know, because, like, these guys are all very skilled players. It's just that, you know, that, like, clinic thing that you see missing out of them where all of them are capable of doing crazy shit by themselves, but when it comes down to the, to these, like, minutia, like ninja capping, preventing ninja capping, clearing things, backing each other up in certain spots, shifting around in their rotates, you know, to hold on to certain spots, calling for doubling up spots, blah, 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 blah. Um, that's just what they're missing, but their raw star power is enough to beat anybody. Um, Icy Hot. Is such a good fucking team, and they almost lost to these guys here. On on a map like Railroad 2, um, they were able to almost just brute force uh, fuck him in the asshole. So, good game to, to Rat Pack, just that little bit of an improvement that needs to be made heading into the playoffs. Um, but yeah, just Devin, 
uh, I believe was the top fragger overall, was it? For, for Rat Pack, 32. And 23 for 55. Grant, 53. Illusion, 47. CK, definitely 55. PB, 30. 56. Okay, so they were all really close, actually. It was like PB, uh, CK, Devin, Grant, Illusion, Arachnid, something like that. And on the other side, I, I believe Kanga, Jesse, top fragged, um, 33 and 27 for 60. Oh, Vertex might have tied him. Yeah, he always has that, that strong car half. It's like no matter what he does on allies, he's going to end up with around 40 on Axis. So he'll make up the difference to, to end up top fragging. But Jesse came close this time uh, with bees, I think, just behind them. So good game to both teams. I just, uh, where are we here? I need to go to the last match because I still have fucking predictions to do. So I didn't get to watch this one. This was the one game that had something on the line. Um why so serious versus Ifar? Why so serious wins by seven? I did not get to watch this. I have no idea what happened. Let's take a look. Sam paying off the pork bow. Let's take a look. If anybody can name that movie, I will, I will applaud you. Um, so Nightmare actually played this game. I'm sure he did well because he played. I can't tell what those scores say at all. It's so fucking like the. Oh, uh, the font is just, like, blending in with that screen. I have no idea what iFart scores are here. It looks like... Looks like maybe Manor top frag there for them on Allies. No. Nightmare by one. Jizz. Come, come. No, Jizz. Scotty. Manor. Come, come. Mata. Uh, and for why so serious and a half that they won by 58. Justin Lynch, of course, been playing excellent all season, uh, and he can do it all. He can play any weapon. It looks like Dustin got in here going train at a, had a good half on Axis. Crod with 27, Paul 24, which is about all you can ask sniping against Nightmare because good luck hitting him. Uh, Johnny, 1928, I'm guessing going longer apartments, uh, and Brandon, 23 and 32, but again, we see it here, they got out fragged, doesn't matter, because the teamwork side of things, like, with guys like, I mean, there's so much experience on Why So Serious, uh, of guys who can direct traffic in the Brandons, in the Pauls, in the Johnnies, guys who've played forever and understand the inside, uh, inside scoop when it comes to being successful in the game so they end up winning this half by 58 even though they're out fragged uh and then on the other side they lost by 51 and there they actually out fragged <laughs> i fart for good measure uh it's nightmare kum kum jizz manor scotty mata scotty finally getting into a game which is good to see uh, and then on, on a so serious side, Element with 30, Brandon with 29, always a boss with the Grand, Paul with 28, uh, Crod with 24, Moosh with 21, good job in train, and then Johnny with 16, going again long, it's a tough fucking route, but this was a really close game, I, I'm so glad to see why so serious, ending up being serious, because as, uh, we said, all over the place from the start. Uh, you know, there's so much ability on that team. They are definitely a gold team. Even though they tried to say they weren't, and I understand why, it's just like, there's so many good players on that team. And they showed that. Uh, played really good games against everybody whenever they were playing serious. Even against Thunder, they played serious for a half, and we only, we, we won by like, I think a half a cap on Rail Yard. Um... Yeah, and we actually were pretty sure we were going to lose for that entire half because it, they were they looked so good. So, Ifart unfortunately finished the season winless. Uh, you know, Nightmares only played like I think two, three matches. It's, this is like Scotty's first match. Uh, the roster's been basically a revolving door. Um, they just really haven't been able to have any sort of consistent lineup, and that's you know that's what's going to happen with that. 
and and it's unfortunate because there are a lot of good players and and good guys, but you know now it's playoff time. We saw this with a nightmare team just a couple seasons ago. They went winless. They went into the playoffs, and what happened? They got their first win, upsetting somebody, which was fucking bonkers. Uh, so anybody who underestimates them is in trouble because Nightmare by himself could could pretty much one v six anybody if you watch the guy play. I'm pretty sure you could put Nightmare on certain maps against six other players, and he could play it to a tie. Uh, you know, obviously people could ninja around him to go grab the flags behind him. But if it's like a, if you if you said like the only way you can only go through this way, like say Thunder, you can only come through middle on Thunder. You can't go to either of the extremities to to get to other flags. He could one v six. You know, it's just uh, he has a sixth sense or something. Um, but good game to why so serious good finish uh i fart looking forward to seeing if they can uh repeat the typical story of ktp season one let's move on to the fucking predictions for this week there's less uh than normal thank god because i'm dying (sighs) i wish i could keep this under an hour but there's pretty much no chance at this fucking point because i just go off on fucking tangents where is this screen? There it is. Okay, smokey dokey. Ho ho. Fit to screen. No, 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 no. Stretch to screen. There we are. So, let's go to bronze. So, these are the maps. Right. We only have one matchup to do this week. Uh, it's best this semifinals is next week. Uh, Floss versus we're going to lose. I have no uh, idea what they're playing. Or if we've even heard what they're playing. Um, I can check. Anzio for those guys. Harrington for those guys. Washed up there. Wait, what? Oh, okay. Uh, that's a different game. That's Sunday, March 12th. That's, yeah, okay. No one there, no one there. Okay, I got nothing for that matchup. Um, it looks like, I mean, this is kind of weird because it looks like the semifinals are going to be played before. I, I, I can't do, I can't go that far. I can't go that far. So, uh, Flossed versus we're going to lose. Uh, let's have a look at the standees. So... We're going to lose 2-4, and four, Floss 2-4, and four, very even. Um, they have played each other, and I believe Floss got the W. Let me fucking W-check that. By the way, if anybody is trying to get a hold of me on Discord, it's because I'm not in the 1.3 Discord. And apparently you can't message people when you don't share a Discord with them, apparently. Uh, so don't think, again, that if I... If I haven't responded to a message or I seem to have not gotten a message, it's not anything other than I, I just can't see it. Uh, that's the downside, I guess, of not being in that Discord. Where did they play each other here? God, my head hurts and my eyes fucking hurt. Ay, ay, ay. We're going to lose Floss. There it is. So Floss took this one on Shamil. We have no idea what map they're playing. Um at the rosters, I would like to see we're going to lose, get to have uh, Benzer in here, because god, he would be such a good player to be able to, to throw in there with the likes of, you know, uh, uh, Dennis, just kidding, Nick, Skin, and uh, Grim, and and Softerson, and Pizza Hut, like, Quarter, these guys. Uh, you know, like, I, I think that they're not getting enough credit they weren't playing like any, you know, uh, competitively in any way, shape, or form until like this season. Like, right, they I think were the last team to get in. So, everything that they do to improve is just a huge victory. Um, and they're they're experienced players and old school players and players who understand the game and love the game. Um, you know, like, but yeah, I would just love to see uh, Benzer get in there. Uh, he can make a big difference for we're going to lose. And, and equaling out some frag power. Matching up with Fincher for Floss, who has been a god. Uh, pretty much at least one out of every, one half out of every match. Uh, he drops bombs. Sometimes both. Um, he's just such a good heavy. 
Kingyo has been having a really good season as well. Uh, getting to Carr, he did not get to do that on uh, the typicals of the world. He was stossing, but gets a car now, looking great. Beluga looking better and better every week. Um, don't think Shifty's gotten to play yet. Joey and MJ both looked like they were starting to improve as well. You know, Joey, another guy who was playing long ago uh, and, and needs to get those reps in. That's really the case with... On both teams, a lot of the players just need the reps. Um, and I can attest to the fact that it does not, it's not like a short time frame for that. It took me, I mean, it, fucking KTP season one, I was, I didn't play particularly well. Uh, thankfully, I ended up sniping for most of it. So like statistically, it looked like I was playing like my old self. Um, but really, I was just sniping, you know, and sniping is pretty easy most of the time. Uh, so like, no, you know, you can't get impatient with trying to, to bring that skill back after years and years of, of a layoff. Uh, I don't know what map they're going to play, obviously. Um, I can't even really speculate, to be completely honest with you. Uh, there are definitely a couple maps that I think could get tough on We're Gonna Lose unless they can bring in somebody like BNZR to sort of counteract the Fincher and the King Yo uh, coming from Flossed. Like a Lennon. Um, probably like both the rail yards, well, railroads. Uh, and maybe even a Harrington. If it was an Anzio, I think we're going to lose it, have a better chance uh, to, to bring this one around. And same with Thunder. I have no idea what the map's going to be. Um... But just looking at, obviously, how their first match went, Flossed, they won by, like, 300-something. Um, you know, you just got to take Flossed after after a dominant performance like that. But, you know, if the, if the map is wrong, the price is wrong, Bob. Uh, if the map is wrong, it could backfire on Flossed for sure. And we'll see what lineup we're going to lose can, can truck out there. But we'll see. I got to take, though, this is a best of one because the first round. Um, my God, dude, I just like, uh, lost by 96 because it's the reverse of 69, <laughs> uh, 12 years old. Anyways, uh, hopefully I'll be able to cast that. Hopefully I'm still alive. We'll, we'll see if I'm still alive. So right now it feels like, I, I don't even know if I'm actually doing this right now. My fever seems to be getting so high that there's every bit of a chance that that I'm not even actually recording this. Uh, what's next? Silver, I think, right? Right? God, it's really hard just to, like, get get the air out of my lungs to say the words. Like, to push the words out right now. I, I don't know how many of you have had really, like, high fevers when you've been sick. Like I said, I... When I had all the like kidney failure problems when I was a young kid, my fevers would get so high, and uh, you just get like it's like it's like you're tripping, kind of. You just get very delirious. I mean, I've literally hallucinated due to fevers and had seizures. That was when I was really young. Um, I'm trying to like stay on top of it to be able to tell just in case now, because I'd really like to not have a seizure <laughs> for the first time in 34 years or whatever. This is why I can't hold my pee. Because, like, my, my kidneys are just, like, the, they're too... They've had too much of a history of getting fucked in the face. So, silver. Where are we at for silver? Here. There they are. So, I need to check and see if they've got the maps figured out. Insomnia versus Jetty does, as does Goose versus Nogo. Okay. Um, let's start off with Goose versus Nogo. So, obviously, Goose has multiple top of the line gold players on it in Andrew and Debo. Um, DB has been one of the best snipers in silver this season. Hopper shown major, major improvements across these last couple seasons. Uh, Reptar, same thing. Quackduck uh, has been really like a, a, revolution, a revelation for all the teams he's played for. And, uh, you know, the Goose Patrol looks good. 
no go. I have no idea what's going on with them because they were missing like a lot of players for their match last week. You got to figure that. Okay, well, it's just assuming that they are going to play with like the lineup they mostly were playing with of Allen and Spoon, the the God heavies, um, Corey, and Austin, and Recoil, and either Deidre or Caleb or uh, Apple. I said Corey, right? Fuck me, man. So, the map that they will be playing is Harrington. Okay. They obviously haven't played each other on this map this season because fucking captains went and voted to remove. This is why votes are stupid. Uh, and everybody who gets so crazy about voting, what they really mean is, I didn't like the choice that you guys made, so we need to vote. Unless that vote goes against what I want, in which case, fuck voting, you should still change. Like, that's really all it is. The people are like, we should vote, we should vote. Just like we said, like, do you think we're going to try to fuck people over on, on the fucking map rotation? Like, there's all this conspiracy, conspiracy, conspiracy. Why would we be trying to use all of our free time in our fucking mid-30s to ruin a DoD league for anybody? That's what trolls do. We are all giving our time to make the league fun, keep the game alive. So the whole vote, we need to vote, we need to vote, and then, of course, the people who wanted to vote were like, what the fuck? The vote didn't go the way we thought it was going to. Why'd you have a vote? That's stupid. You see the hypocrisy going on there and the double standard? Like, I don't think I need to preach about this to anybody because about 98% of the community is fully aware. Um, but there is just that... That little contingency of people that think they're, like, pulling one over on everybody else. Like, they're fucking Machiavellian geniuses about this. Uh, but, come on, guys. Like, we're all adults here. So, Harrington, um, as I said, didn't get played this season. So, everybody will be real excited to see it. Harrington, I think, in most circumstances, I would say would favor no-go. I think that Allen and Spoon can hold down Debo. Uh, Debo and Hopper, or whoever it is that's going to be having with Debo, or maybe Debo's not having. I'm just assuming he's going to have. But you got to be able to hold down Debo wherever he is. Uh, otherwise, that's it. Game over. Uh, he is a player that could single-handedly get enough kills to just wipe out the, the your team uh, over and over again. Same for Gall. Um, I imagine Andrew will go mid. Obviously, the meta of this map now is to just like send all of your ancestors mid. Like, not just you and your sniper, and maybe a third guy, no. Like, pull your ancestors th forward in time and send them mid, too. Three isn't enough. You need six in mid, uh, somehow. So, we'll see if uh, Nogo has a game plan in mind for countering that. God, my head is just falling apart right now. If they don't, it could be a long game. I'm not sure who's going to snipe for no-go. It could be either of those guys, Austin or Recoil. They're both very good at Harrington. I imagine it'll be Recoil. Um, Austin has many times in the past been a game-breaking rifle in mid, and he could be that kind of X-factor to match up with a Gull um, or a Debo. Uh, we'll see. I don't know. Corey Price going long. We've seen it time and time again on Cass. He can, especially on Allied side, can just hold down your fucking sandbag spawn and be flanking mid uh, and just kind of like running straight through the map like a psycho and killing all of you. So it's a tough call. It really is. Um, it's going to, I think, in a lot of ways, I mean, it's not like some fucking crazy uh, reveal to be like, it's going to depend on mid on Harrington, the only double cap. Uh, a lot of it is going to depend on mid and who is sort of like executing their the best possible strategy in mid. We all are now sending like a million people mid, I get that, but that's just the one part of it. You have to be able to throw the right nades. Even if you send three or four people mid, you still need people shifting into those spots when your mid players die, because very rarely does the spawn timer work out where like, oh, all four of us died like seven seconds after another guy died, so we're all going to respawn perfectly in time to break mid. It just doesn't happen that way. 
more than like once or twice a fucking match. Um, so you need to be swift and, and communicating when it comes to rotating and sliding in and out of spots, you know. If you, if you need to know all about sliding in and out of spots, this is the guy to tell you about it. But uh, if I have to pick, just because it looked like Nogo was like missing a shitload of people last week, I don't know if that's uh, if that's kind of like a product of the fact that there wasn't really anything to play for in that match. Like playoff seating wise, it was literally just like a freebie for most of the teams in all three divisions. But if that is going to be a thing this week, then Goose Patrol will absolutely be able to run away with it. Um, sniper battle in mid is huge. It's very evenly matched, no matter which guy snipes for no-go. Uh, this is a map where DB can get kind of caught up on staying in mid-house, which, you know, that is that is the right thing to do a lot of times, but it also leaves you a little bit vulnerable uh, to, to situations if mid were to get flooded, or if the other team knows how to throw the proper nades from mountainside, there's ways to nade you out of there. Um, so I would say that like the snipers, both sides just got to kind of mix up their spots. Don't get, you know, you see people nowadays, they will just suicide fucking nade you out of, out of mid house. Now that's like the new strat. It's like one guy run out and jump and draw the shot and I'm running out behind you. And you know, maybe we both die, but there's going to be a four second prime CK nade, uh, you know, and we're going to make sure mid goes down entirely so that at least the sniper has to be at the top of mid steps at the same time we're at the bottom or whatever, like, um, you know, that's been one of the things you see out of Arrington a lot, at least last season. So, uh, heavy wise though, if Debo's heavying, Allen and Spoon going to have to lock that shit down. I'm going to go with, because I, I just, uh, I think that Goose Patrol outside of the Gaul, DB and Debo players have all continued to improve all season. Those three guys have been ridiculous from, from day one, but you've seen a lot of improvement out of Goose Patrol, and I don't know what to expect out of Nogo's lineup. If Nogo was going to have their six best players, I would say Nogo wins this by, like, 80. Um, but they only had, like, two or three guys playing last week, uh, and it didn't sound like, you know, I, I can only speculate, but it didn't, you know, if that's going to be the way it goes here, then odds are they're going to have a tough time pulling it off, so... Got to go with Goose Patrol, just assuming Nogo won't have any semblance of their starting six. Uh, and I'm going to say by, like, 64. I don't know. Numbers, man. But if Nogo has their starting six, you know, it goes the other way. So, Insomniac Gamers versus Jetty. This is another unknown circumstance when it comes to the lineup after what happened in the Railroad 2 match with Mike. Uh... Rumor is he's done, and that Insomnia is trying to find Kaboom to get him to play out the season for them on the heavy, which would be, a, you know, I mean, if you're going to have to replace one of your starters from the whole season, Kaboom as a heavy is a hell of a guy to get to bring in here. Uh, you know, he's very, very good at this game, and in particular at heavying. That would be, like, kind of a perfect scenario if they aren't going to have Gandhi back. If you can just slide a uh, uh, talented and experienced guy like Kaboom on the heavy class, which already doesn't have a lot of, of like proven, uh, reliable, consistent talent on it compared to what you see out of like the, there's just rifles everywhere. You know, you see it in the drafts, like the, the top heavies are like automatically fucking top five picks because after that, there's just not a lot of guys who are real true heavies. There's guys who can heavy, like I can heavy, uh, I had to do it for a draft. Uh, there are, you know, Austin can heavy, uh, other guys like that who are in that same kind of ilk. Uh, I, it's not utility players. I feel like that doesn't really tell the story with guys like that. It's more like they can do it all. Jack of all trades. Not master of none, though, because usually it's their master of the sniper class. Uh, I don't know why that is. But uh, we'll see if Kaboom ends up playing for Insomnia or if they need to go for a ringer. Uh, they are playing Anzio. So, um, you know, the heavy is kind of like, that's a spot that you need to have locked down pretty well because we've seen it time and time again out of the best teams. You can use street to your advantage. Uh, it just, it flows through to the rest of the map. If you can abuse street, uh, then you can overtake anything. You can be down to your fucking last flag, and if a guy or two can get through street, 
grab that flag and fan out together. They can overtake another double cap. You can reverse cap it back. Street is so important. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that. We've seen multiple matches literally come down to who can hold street for the longest. I'm thinking of the icy hot typical match last season. Though that was when the configs were still broken. So, you know, whatever. But that's just still, it's just what happened regardless. And that literally I came down to who was going to hold street the most. And typical proved to be uh, very adept at doing so behind Milo and uh, Frank. Uh, so, God, my fucking head, man. What screen do I have up on the fucking screen right now? Okay, that one. Show me Sylvie's. Insomnia and Jetty have definitely played this season. There it is. Insomnia. Oh, yeah, that was a good match on Shamil. Jetty was, was winning for a lot of that. And then Illusion and Sean just uh, started going off. And I think there was a couple of, like, TK nades that took Jetty from being, like, pushing for a cap out and holding everything to no one was alive and they were getting capped on. Jetty, you know, it's been a tough season for them. Um, you know, they have a, a, a few guys that are, like, just playing really well all the time. You know, the Steves and the Johns and the Modgers and the, and the Rivs. And then you kind of, with those last two spots, it's been like a revolving door. You know, like, Ian, when he's getting in there and sniping, it's playing great. Um, Dan Kaliz never played DOD before the first match he played this season or, uh, or whatever, so... You know, but he still is able to shoot stuff. Like, he's clearly got the mechanical abilities. But that's tough to overcome a guy who's literally never played the game before the season. That right there. Like, I know a lot of people would think, like, but you have four or five guys that, like, have played forever. That's all it takes is just one area where, like, you know, it's not even necessarily, like, they don't know anything. Even even just kind of, like, not understanding the rotation process or the timings of things. Things that are second nature to us after fucking a thousand years or whatever, uh, that alone could be enough to really swing things for the other direction. And, uh, you know, like, uh, to me, you looked at that at the beginning of the season, it was like, this is going to be a process. They're going to have to be playing a lot together uh, to get to get those guys that aren't experienced into the swing of things. Because, man, Dan, like, that guy has great, great aim and reaction time uh, and understanding of FPS gaming, but... You know, from the DOD standpoint, it just takes the reps. You gotta get the reps. You can't just, like, I know Jetty a lot of time has been just kind of like playing a scrim the day of the match and then the match. Like, that's not enough. It's just not enough to get caught up to where everybody else is at activity-wise. No matter how good you might uh, do frag-wise in that match, like, it might look like you're having a good performance, but the little things will catch up to you. Even if you out-frag the other team in that situation, odds are you're going to be giving up mid caps or double caps that you shouldn't you're going to be losing flags that you should never you're going to be throwing mistimed nades stuff like that um to me jetty needs to get some playing time together before this match to have a chance i'm not sure who the six is going to be if it's going to be dan if it's going to be frank if it's going to be saf if it's going to be ian uh, it's going to be two of two out of that list oh god my head um it's on anzio i believe yeah anzio right Anzio, yeah. So, you know, you look at... I'm not sure who they would have going uh, Plaza side on Axis with a rifle. Could be anybody, but that's going to be important. Of course, I would say that. Uh, you know I will. Because I am always trying to fucking swing the meta of double windows into different directions myself. Uh, it's important, though, man. Like, people, people figure out how to counter... The, a good double windows rifle, and then you gotta adjust because it's such a powerful position, not just being in double windows, but what happens after that, being able to pick down like a pretty narrow fucking hallway of spawn entrance, which leads to the first flag. Jetty needs somebody to be going that way that they can rely on to to do like the you know the bare minimum of of holding and pushing and throwing good nades to break. And, and knowing when to try to go push, when to uh, rotate, try to flank, uh, when to maybe ninja, etc., etc. Uh, but I have no idea who they're going to send that way. I know that most of their rifles are bridge players, and they probably don't really have any experience going double windows. Uh, Steve maybe has sniped double windows. Um, don't, off the top of my head, think he's carded. 
Maybe it's dusted. I don't know. We'll see. But on the other side of things for Insomniac Gaming, I mean, Sean has done both. Um, he's very capable of going either route with the car. And, and you know, they can just kind of decide where they want that beast to go and raise hell. Uh, Purdy also can do both. Um, I know that for a fact. He can also Grand Plaza. I've seen him do that. Uh, so, you know, they have a lot of versatility there. If they get Kaboom in here, or if, or if Gandhi just plays... But we don't know what's going to happen with that. Um, you know, if they can't get Kaboom, if it's like they have to use like a random ringer that you know really isn't up to par with those guys, then that could be problematic. But you know, Insomnia has looked really good. They looked really good against Clinic uh, until things kind of fell apart there on Railroad Two. They looked good against Jetty in their first matchup. Uh, I think the only way Jetty wins here is if they go in with a big game plan on who's going to go where. They practice more than just right before the match. Like, right before the match is great. It's a good warm-up. You can't take it into your mind too hard. You need to just look at it like this is literally just tantamount to stretching um, before a workout. That's it. But have a good game plan on Anzio, and if, if Insomnia is potentially missing that second heavy and it isn't, they aren't able to really get somebody to, to fill that role in properly, Jetty can take this. But, I mean, I'm assuming Kaboom is going to play for them it's the playoffs uh i don't think i've seen jetty getting to scrim too much i've just seen them talk about like when the match is they're all experienced players on anzio but that's not going to be enough uh you know in this day and age i don't think we'll see god everything is so fucking won't 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 right now i'm gonna take insomnia uh, i think that jetty is gonna have their best match of the season here um, but I think it's going to be a heartbreaker for him. Unfortunately, obviously, Thunder and Jetty are basically all one team. Uh, like, we literally, Thunder has been Jetty in the past. Like, when, when we lost a couple players in, like, fucking 2006 and sw or 7 and switched our name to Jetty and then switched our name to Thunder and switched our name to Jetty. So, you know, I've played for Jetty myself, and they have all, for the most part, played for Thunder at one point or another. It's been a tough season for them. Uh... But, uh, you know, hopefully they'll they'll stick together if they were to get eliminated here and not just call it quits for next season. I have no idea. But we'll see. Hopefully the good vibe tribe, which, you know, that is... I don't know if this was just parallel thinking or what, but to explain the good vibe tribe that everybody saw last week, Jetty was the good vibe tribe in 2005. Uh... We never said anything about this. Like, we didn't ever complain in public because it's a really stupid thing to talk shit about. <laughs> but just so that it's very clear, uh, the Good Vibe Tribe is Jetty. And the Good Vibe Tribe music channel is John's music channel. Because uh, I heard people were like, they're copying the Vibe Tribe. Uh, which, I mean, I, a lot of those guys weren't around in 2005, 6, 7, so I, I can't really fault them, but... Jetty was literally the good vibe tribe. The good vibe tribe. So, that's the key there. That's, you know, missing between the two. Whatever. We'll see what happens. Uh, I'm taking Insomnia by 42. That's what I'm thinking. And I'm sure that just making the statement that I just did will cause at least one person from that group of people to freak out at me. Uh, which is just insane. Truly. But... Come on, guys. How old are we here, for Christ's sake? Ay, ay, ay. So that does it for silver. Um, uh, you know, there'll be another one of this. these for, for the semis. We'll deal with that later, because I'm dying. I can't believe I'm still upright right now. We're at an hour 15 minutes. Let's go on to the gold. Um, where is it? There it is. We've got Rat Pack and Why So Serious. Four versus five. Um... This is a best of one. I'm not sure what map it's on. Let's see if they've said Rat Pack. What map? It doesn't say. I thought it said, but it doesn't. Maybe. Could be Anzio. I don't know. I think it's Anzio. Don't quote me on that if I'm wrong, but just on the off chance. Oh, fuck me, man. <clears throat> So this is a tough one. Uh, because Why So Serious has the kind of guys that would be able to help them succeed on Anzio, no matter what, 
you look at like one to one matchup wise. Um, oh god, <sighs> I don't know how I took a COVID test and it wasn't positive because it just feels like you'd expect COVID to feel like whatever. So it's gonna be a close match, I think. Um, why so serious? You got Crod, Booten, Justin Lynch. Uh, Moosh, uh, Warchild, uh, Crawd, Element. I think I just listed like 52 people. Um, God, I don't feel good. I don't feel good. I just listed all the people. So those are all guys that are good at this map. Uh, I batch and left Element go double windows. Oh, Gorilla. I forgot Paul. I didn't list Paul, I don't think. You'll have Justin Heavy with Crawd, I'm sure. You'll have Johnny going bridge with Booten, who might Unter. And Paul, uh, an element could go double windows with the car, uh, and Crod and, and Justin going that way too for, for Rat Pack. I don't know who they're going to send double windows, to be honest with you. Um, I would guess it's PB. Personally, I think PB is too valuable at bridge. Uh, you know, like, it's just, honestly, I would even... You know, CK gets most of his... Again, I know I say this all the time. And I know that it, maybe it's not the best idea in the world. I think actually Stassing double windows is fine. I think that you could send Illusion double windows with the uh, Stoss. Uh, you could really send any of them. But I personally would probably... Because of the of Illusion's play style, um, I think that he could really thrive going Plaza. But all of these guys are bridge players. So it's going to be tough for them. I, I feel like it's going to be PB that goes Plaza. He's done it before. Uh, I just think he's he's more valuable at Bridge. Honestly, I do. But uh, he'll still he'll still be fine. You know, like he's still going to drop bombs. He always does. I just think that his play style and his aim and mechanical uh, prowess is better suited for for Bridge because Plaza is a lot more of it's fucking hide and go seek a lot of the time, man. Um, and then Grant and Devin, great heavy team, going to be going up against Crod and Justin, another great heavy team. But Justin in particular has been a force all damn season. Uh, and then the bridge side of things, if you have like a Paul, uh, Lusion, and CK up against a Booten, uh, Paul, wait. the fuck who's what am i oh it's it's arachnid arachnid i was looking at the wrong team when i was saying rat pack i'm a fucking idiot i'm really losing my mind now so arachnid versus paul uh booten and warchild or moosh versus ck and illusion on bridge booten is very crafty on bridge uh all, all these guys really understand how to play these routes um you know illusion will probably go plaza on allied side you know, uh, he's he's very adept at holding main ramp and, and playing in church town pizzeria and stuff. It's a fucking tough call, man. Like, the an amount of experience you have on why so serious. Like, they can absolutely win this game. Uh, I don't know what their lineup's going to be. They've used ringers a lot this season. Like, not many. But it seems like most of their matches have had to bring in one ringer. Um, like if they if they are gonna put out like a, a real good Anzio lineup out of these guys, they could fucking absolutely pull this off because we just saw that the way that Icy Hot was able to pivot and go into more like crafty DOD ninja capping, you know ninja breaking etc cetera, etc. Cetera, and Rat Pack didn't really have an answer for that, um, and that's kind of what Why So Serious's strengths will be with guys like Paul and Booten there to direct traffic. Um, and then Justin kind of like plowing as he's been doing with the heavy. I am so fucking out of it. <sighs> you know, Grant and Devin versus Crod and Justin is a very interesting heavy matchup because, you know, Crod and Grant are kind of similar play style wise. And then Justin and Devin are similar play style wise. Um, I've seen, I've seen Devin and obviously Grant, do some fucking crazy shit on Anzio. I think that the Plaza team is going to be real key because, like I said, Street earlier. I could be wrong, and they're not playing Anzio. I just remembered that that I don't know that they're playing Anzio for sure. So 
you know, fuck me in the face if I'm wrong. Oh. I'm going to go with, I mean, I don't, I don't want to pick against why so serious because I've been up their ass all season and then they started to play serious and prove me right about it. So I'd like to support them. I just think that after that loss by Rat Pack last week, they're going to really be coming out. Like we cannot give up that kind of shit again. Uh, so I think they're going to be extra conscious of those kind of things going on and we'll be able to pull this one off by four. That's what I'm saying. Four points victory here for Rat Pack. Um, or you're going to see a boot ninja cap as time expires. You know, it's, he's done it many times, many, many times. Uh, what's last year? T3, oh, and I fart. Uh, no idea what map they're playing. For T3, obviously, you've got their team. No Name and Leo and PDX and Nick and Taylor and Till. And then for iFart, it's like a, a total, it's like a potluck, you know? You don't know who you're going to get out of Manor, Kum Kum, Mata, Saka, Jizz, Scotty, Nightmare, SQ, and SC. Caffrey has not played, so it's not going to be him. Nightmare has only played a couple matches. I mean, it's playoffs, so I think he'll show up, but there's just as much of a chance that he won't again, so... Uh, even if he does, like, it's, it's T3, you know, like, whatever map gets chosen here, they're heavily favored. I don't think that iFart has any, uh, has any doubts about that, or, or is thinking like, oh, you know, we should be the favorites, or anything like that, but let me tell you, if iFart were to win this, this would, I would be willing to say, like, relative to time period and everything i would call it the biggest upset of all time because of how you know like t3 won the title in season one went to the finals in season two you know it was one of the favorites here like you know for them to get eliminated by a winless team after the regular season would be fucking massive do i think that's going to happen absolutely not t3 plays fundamental dod and and defensive DOD way too well. They they don't make mistakes like that. Um, unless they take them too lightly, but I doubt it. You know, I just doubt that'll happen. Uh, you know, PDX and, and Till and shit and Taylor, those guys will, they'll tell everyone to get the fuck together if, if it looked like they were not having a good day to start things off. Uh, by the time IFART would be able to, like, establish a little bit of a lead, T3 would already be turning it back around without question. So I just don't, no matter what map, I I mean, maybe, I guess Thunder, if they could get it on Thunder, but I'm guessing that T3, I mean, they then again, they looked really good on Thunder against Rat Pack. So, but Nightmare, I, you know, sniping on Thunder could be a problem and could potentially just, you could just strangle T3 out if you can come in with a good setup and game plan. Uh and just rely on Nightmare to outshoot everybody. But that's, you know, it's all fine and dandy to speculate and, and make an estimation of how that kind of shit's going to go down. In reality, pretty much 0% chance that that would work. But I'd, I'd love to see Ifar give them a hell of a game. You know, they look, they look good against us on Thunder, and they didn't have Nightmare. Um, you know, I, like, obviously we won... Uh, and I don't even remember what the score was. It might have been like 90 or something. So maybe that's a little bit deceiving. But, you know, they were they were pushing us. And I think that we were real close to giving up a cap out uh, at one point that might have lost us the game. I don't know. I could be fucking wrong, guys. I'm fucking out of it. So I'm taking T3. I don't know the map. I'm so sorry. I wish I did. I, I, I don't feel good. Uh... T3 by, let's just say fucking 169, 69. <laughs> uh, all right, so that does it. Uh, because I'm, I'm literally like, if you, if, if you could feel what I feel like right now, you'd be like, get the fuck off the computer. Uh, thank you again, everybody who reached out and stuff last week. Uh, like I said, if I didn't answer, it's just because I probably saw it, and then by the time I, I like 
could respond. I just had forgotten because there's literally, I mean, there's a lot. And there's messages on other apps too, I think, where I just haven't even gotten to, gotten to those yet. So, uh, you know, thank you guys so much. Thank you, Jane, for the timestamps, which I, I'm guessing you will do. Uh, you know, if not, it's okay, because I'm sure shit not doing anything right now. Uh, and uh, I don't know. Thank you again to Clinic. And I can tell you, you guys may need to be ready for these upcoming matches, because... If I don't wake up feeling way better tomorrow, then, uh, <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, yeah, uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Like, this is just fucked up, man. I like I fucking needed this, really, truly. So thank you guys for watching. Um, wish me luck. If you don't hear from me for a while, I've probably just died at that point of something i need to pee again really bad so i'm gonna go do that and then i'm gonna go bury my face in uh whatever i was gonna say and uh yeah love you guys thank you again Mwah. peace out ktp good luck everybody in round one of the playoffs uh and yeah just good good night man fuck me